When playing DFS, it's really important not just to build lineups, but also to evaluate those lineups after the contests are done and try to figure out what did you do correctly, what did you do poorly, and then also study some of the competition to see what are some of the best DFS players doing on given slates and what can you learn from that to improve your process. And we have those tools available here at stochastic.com. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use our post-contest sims tool for MLB. And where you're going to want to start here is by clicking on the Post Contest Simulator. If you're in our suite of Sims tools, it's found all the way to the right here amongst the list of all the different data and tools that we have. Then if you're looking at baseball lineups, you want to have baseball selected. And then DraftKings just has to be DraftKings. FanDuel doesn't make CSVs available. So at least as of now, it's not possible to do this for FanDuel in the same way it is for DraftKings. This is June 24th that I'm recording this video. So I'm going to look at the slate on June 23rd. And I'll select a contest that I played in. This is a contest that probably a lot of you play in as well. The $3.150 max contest over on DraftKings. Now what you could do in here is this is a list of all the people that played in this GPP. You could select your name by typing it in here. And for the purpose of this, I'm not going to select an opponent. But if you do want to compare your lineups to any other person in the field, you could select that person's name in the opponent section. And that'll compare your lineups to their lineups. Now let's run the contest simulation. And keep in mind, this is based on the actual results of the tournament. And by actual results, I don't mean how many fantasy points each individual player scored, but rather what was the actual ownership of all the players in the field? What was the ownership of the players that you played? What was your lineup construction? And then based on our simulations, how is everything expected to perform relative to all that information, which also includes our simulations, our fantasy point projections, all that information all included here. So right at the top, you're going to see my lineups that I played in this contest. I had 150 lineups. You can see how many dupes I had per lineup. Not really a massive concern for baseball, especially on large slates here. Very rarely going to see somebody that has lineups that are duped massive amounts of times. Uh, you can see my simulated lineup ROI. So this is what my lineups were expected to have a return of 7.7% and my actual lineup ROI, 0.2%. So a very neutral slate for me got a 0.2% ROI on the lineups that I played. And this here is the average fantasy points that my lineups were simulated to have. This is how many they actually had on average. So I was expected to have 97 fantasy points per lineup. My lineups actually ended up scoring 107 fantasy points per lineup. And then finally here, you'll see the average ownership sum of those lineups. So of all my lineups combined and all the players in them, this is what the popularity was on average of those lineups. They were owned 115.7%. All the players in those lineups added up on average. So now some other things that are going to be really useful for you to look at when you're reviewing the post-contest sims. Player ROI, you could see the individual players that were expected to be the most profitable on a given slate. And then you could also compare that to their actual ROI and the field ownership percentage. And then if you click on your name here, it'll also show what your projected ownership was. Well, not projected ownership, projected ROI on those players as well as your actual ownership. You, you don't project your ownership on players. You already know it at this point. So some players here that stand out, if we look at the sim player ROI, you'll see here that the best overall sim ROI of any player on this slate was Jake Rogers, catcher for the Detroit Tigers. Any lineup with him in it actually had a 217.3% actual ROI. So that's not similar. That's what the actual numbers were. The field played him 4.3% of the time. My lineups with Jake Rogers had a 29.2% ROI. And then overall, this is my ownership to Jake Rogers. I had him in 8% of lineups, whereas the field played him in 4.3%. So I was a little bit overweight to Jake Rogers, about double the field here. And you could also sort by all the individual positions. You could look at outfield, third base, second base. You get the deal, all the individual positions. Something else you want to be looking at is the stack ROI. So this is going to show you what each stack actually had as a projected ROI. So you'll see my lineups here. You can see the breakdown of the kind of lineups I played. It was all five-man stacks with some three-man stacks as runbacks as well. And this is what the expected ROI was of those lineups. See my Cincinnati stacks, 28.9% expected ROI. Detroit Tiger stacks, 26.4% expected ROI. Then you can also look down, you can see, well, which lineups did you play that were not expected? 
to be as good from a stack ROI perspective. You can see my Braves lineups had a negative 13% expected ROI. Red Sox, negative 12.5%. So this is good to look back and try to identify what, what was it about certain teams that maybe I missed out on or the Sims, maybe adjustments I could have made to get less of these teams and more of these teams. And then if you look at the stack types, you could see a further breakdown of the different stacks that I built and the ROI on them. So my five three stacks had a 41.3% ROI. I had five one one stacks, they had a negative 6.9% ROI. And then five two one stacks, those had a negative 23.8% ROI for me. Now, if we go ahead and look at the entire field, you could also see for the field as a whole, what the expected ROI of stacks were. And you can see for this particular slate, the Detroit Tigers, the Pittsburgh Pirates, those were the best overall stacks to be rostering. And then the worst stacks for this contest, the Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, Kansas City Royals, these ones have the most negative expected ROI of those teams. Something else you could do is you look at the lineup ROI, and this will show you of every single lineup that was played in this GPP, what the expected ROI was on those lineups. So you see here, this lineup by this user, Dane09444, this lineup had a simulated ROI of 100.9%, which means based on our sims, this had the highest expected return of any lineup in the entire field. The pitchers were Paul Skeens and Nestor Cortez, and then you can see all the individual hitters in these lineups as well. And now if you want to instead just look at your lineups instead of the entire field's lineups, you can just click on your username here, and then you'll see all the lineups you played, the one that I had with the highest sim ROI, it was also Paul Skeens and Nestor Cortez as the pitchers. And then if you look at the individual hitters, it looks like this was a Detroit Tiger stack. Jake Rogers, Colt Keith, I see a Wenzel Perez, Matt Veerling, Gio Rochelle in it. So five-man Tiger stack. And then you could also look at what your worst lineups were. So sort here, you can see my worst lineup I played. This had a negative 36% sim ROI. Pitchers were Framber Valdez, Reese Olsen. Really good way to evaluate lineups and try to figure out what's going right for you, what's going wrong. And then also it's useful, like I'd said at the top, to try to look up some other players in the field to see what their lineups look like. So we'll do that in a second as well. And then also a number of other metrics that are on the page here, where the lineup actually finished, how often it was duplicated, the salary used, the actual fantasy points it scored, the simulated fantasy points that it scored, as well as the ownership of the lineup that was in there. So let's go into the user ROI here. And now if we click here, I could filter by just people who max entered. So I'll type in 150 here, and we could see all the people that played 150 lineups. These were their expected SIM ROIs, their actual ROIs on their lineups. So let's look at JNW1129. You'll see that of anybody who played 150 lineups, he had the highest simulated ROI, 22.9%, and then also had pretty strong actual results, 91.8% actual ROI. So he almost doubled the money that he put in for this contest. Now, if you want, you could click on this person's username here. And then when you do that, It'll show them on the screen in the same way that it showed me before. And now we can look at what all of their lineups were. We could see the highest expected sim ROI lineup from JNW. This was a lineup with Nick Lodolo and Nestor Cortez at pitcher. And then the stack looks like this was also a Detroit Tiger stack. Then if we go to stack ROIs here, we could also look at the different stacks that JNW played. See, he made a bunch of five-man stacks, also played four-man stacks. Let's see. So he played predominantly five-man stacks, and that's something I've noticed from looking at the post-contest sims. It is very frequent that the best overall lineups are five-man stacks. It's not to say there can't be good lineups that are four-man stacks, but the top lineups are usually going to be five-mans, which is why I try to focus my lineups on building the best five-man stacks that the contest generator in the sims gives me. But you'll see here that of the top lineups he played, well, of the 150 lineups he played, we had, what, like 125-ish were five-man stacks and then played like 25 lineups that were non-five-man stacks. So definitely one of the reasons that he had such good results and good sim ROI results as well is because JNW primarily played five-man stacks. Then if we go and we look at his players that he rostered, you could see who he overall had the most exposure to. He had 76% Paul Skeens. He had 29% of Nick Lodolo. 
Uh, so mostly pitchers towards the top. And you see he was a little bit spread out with his offense exposure. The hitter he had the most of was TJ Friedel. And then you see the other players here, uh, Heimer Condelario, Jake Rogers, Ellie De La Cruz. So the teams that he had the most of it was the Cincinnati Reds and the Detroit Tigers. So that's uh, some interesting information to look at here. And if there's ever anything that you ever want to know from this tool, it's really all stuff you could look up. If you want to change the contest that you want to look at, you can look at any of the other contests that are in our post contest sims for the day. You could change, you could run a sim for that, and then look up your username in that contest as well. You also don't even have to be in the contest that you look up. If you just want to see the overall results of a contest, you could check on it see what the different people played in the contest, and maybe you'll determine from looking at the post-contest sims that's a little bit easier of a contest than maybe the ones that you are playing in. So that's the best ways to approach the post-contest sims and evaluate your lineups. It's not enough to just play DFS and look at your results. There's a lot of variance. There's upswings. There's downswings. And a lot of times, your actual expected results could be different than what your simulated results are. So this is always a good way to check your process and make sure that you're on the right track you haven't done it already, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also a link below in the YouTube description box if you're looking to sign up for our Sims package at Stochastic. It includes the contest generator. You can build your lineups on our site, our Sims tools, so you can simulate the lineups on the site. And then, of course, after the contest are over, you can use this post-contest Sim tool to see how your lineups are actually expected to perform.